In today's video, we will be discussing how to take vertical bite wing radiographs using a RIN kit and red bite tabs. Vertical bite wings are used primarily for patients with advanced periodontal involvement, where the bone loss may be so extensive that it does not show up on horizontal bite wings. Vertical bite wings are often used as post-treatment or follow-up images for patients that have periodontal disease. As opposed to horizontal bite wings, where the receptor is placed horizontally in the patient's mouth, the sensor is instead placed vertically in an up and down fashion when taking vertical bite wings. Normally, two bite wings are taken on each side posteriorly, premolar and molar, for a total of four. However, if indicated, three vertical bite wings can be taken in the anterior and four in the posterior to capture the incisor, canine, premolar, and molar areas. Today we will be showing you how to take posterior vertical bite wings using the RIN kit and using red bite tabs. To begin, the station must be set up using proper infection control. Next, you must set up a sterilized RIN kit. To take proper vertical bite wings using a RIN kit, you will need the long blue bite wing tab, the blue plastic aiming ring, and the straight metal indicator arm. A size 2 receptor should be used when taking vertical bite wings. It is recommended that you use edgies for patient comfort because the length of the receptor may cause discomfort to the patient. Once the patient enters the room, ensure that the patient takes off all jewelry, eyewear, and removable appliances and offer the patient protective eyewear. Don't forget to put on their lead apron. Before starting, it is important to inform the patient of what to expect and ask them if they have any questions. Patients may question the necessity of x-rays, how often they may need them, and whether these x-rays are harmful to the body. In each case, the hygienist must respond in a knowledgeable and friendly manner, informing them that x-rays are allow for the detection of decay, gum disease, and oral cancers and infections. Due to their revealing qualities, radiographs are therefore worth the minute amount of radiation absorbed into the body. The apron and thyroid collar add another layer of protection to help block the x-rays from scattering to other parts of the body. It is very important to identify lingual or palatal tori as this can affect the placement of the sensor. If tori are present, the sensor must be placed on the opposite side of the tori, preventing incorrect angulation of the sensor. It is also important to position the patient so that the maxillary arch is parallel to the floor and the mid-sagittal plane is perpendicular to the floor. Usually, a radiographer starts with the premolar bite wings so that patients with gag reflexes can get used to the sensor before proceeding to the more posterior molar bite wings. Both films on one side should be completed before moving to the other side, but if the patient has problems with gagging, it is recommended to take both premolar bite wings first. When taking premolar bite wings, ensure that the anterior edge of the bite wing receptor is positioned at the midline of the mandibular canine when positioning to expose the image. When exposing the molar region, ensure that you capture all molars, including the third molars if the patient has them. Ask the patient to smile to ensure that the bite tab is placed correctly and that there is proper occlusal contact. Be sure to reposition your bite tab to properly expose the other side of the mouth. Once again, expose the premolar. Follow with the molar. Don't forget to ask the patient to smile. There are five important rules to follow when taking bite wing radiographs. One, receptor placement. Bite wing must be positioned to cover the prescribed area of teeth to be examined. For premolars, center on the second premolar. The front edge of the sensor should be placed in the middle of the canine. For molars, place on the second molar. Two, receptor position. Receptor must be positioned parallel to the crowns of both maxillary and mandibular teeth. The sensor should be equidistant from all the teeth. Three, vertical angulation. The central ray of the x-ray beam must be directed at plus 10 degrees. When using the RIN kit, aligning the PID with the blue ring ensures proper vertical angulation. Four, horizontal angulation. 
The central ray of the x-ray beam must be directed through the contact areas between teeth. This ensures open contacts. And five, receptor exposure. X-ray beam must be centered on the receptor to ensure all areas of the receptor are exposed. Now we'll be showing you how to take vertical bite wings with just red bite tabs. Place the tab over the plastic cover sensor. Follow the same sequence that we discussed before, starting with the premolars and moving to the molars. Additionally, the camera and sensor need to be parallel with each other, and when the patient bites, you must have the front part of the PID meet the front part of the sensor, so ask the patient to smile to check. Proceed to the molars. The same five rules discussed before apply here as well. However, since there is no aligning ring, you must ensure that there is proper vertical angulation of positive 10. Upon completion, half of the mouth would look like this, the premolar radiograph on the right and the molar exposure on the left. When taking vertical bite wings, there are a few common errors that must be understood. Since radiographs expose patients to minute amounts of radiation, we want to avoid retaking images by using proper technique. Since bite wings are more commonly done in a horizontal fashion, it is easy to forget to place the bite tab in the vertical direction when taking vertical bite wings. Do not place it in a horizontal direction. Ensure that you don't have excessive or inadequate vertical angulation. When positioning the PID, it is very easy to position it higher or lower than positive 10 degrees. When the central ray of the x-ray beam is not directed through the contact areas between the teeth, overlapping contacts will occur, as evidence in this radiograph. Furthermore, when the PID is not properly aligned with the receptor and overlaps the side, a cone cut will emerge in which a radio opacity envelopes part of your radiograph. It is important to tell your patient not to move once you leave the room. Patient movement will result in a blurry radiograph. Additionally, make sure to tell your patient to keep his or her fingers out of their mouth during exposure or a phalangioma may occur. It is important to make sure that you follow correct exposure sequence by starting with the premolar exposure. If the molars are exposed first, a gag reflex is more likely to occur. If the patient does not bite down all the way on the bite tab, occlusal airspace may occur and you may not capture the alveolar bone levels as evidenced by this radiograph. Also remember to follow the recommended exposure time, ensuring that you don't over or underexpose the radiograph. This is an example of overexposure. This is an example of underexposure. Upon completion, remove the lead apron from the patient and dismiss your patient. Be sure to clean up your station properly, putting the ring kit back into its cassette. Make sure that you wipe down the sensor thoroughly, since it cannot be sterilized. 